This year, 2022, marks the 10th anniversary of my second album, Native Son. So I wanted to start a podcast, which I'm calling Breezecast, to celebrate some of the people who've been a part of my musical journey, and none more so than in the run-up to 2012, when this album was first released. Native Son was the first album of mine to have feature artists and not just instrumentals, and this episode's guest delivered the performance of the record on the track Missing You. It was a great pleasure to finally speak with an arm. Hello. Morning, or afternoon rather for you, but hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sean, it's really great to chat with you, man. Finally, eh? Yeah, it's kind of surreal. This is this is cool. What a way to start my day, you know? Like, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining me so early for you as well. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, I just... The fact that it was like, what, 11 years ago that we first got in contact. Uh, it's just mad that we live in this age where we can obviously have this connection. We've collabed on two different projects, um, but yet still this is the first time we're actually speaking, like, face-to-face, which is... It's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, I talk about that with my friends sometimes because I've met a lot of them through the internet and uh, the internet can be a cool place sometimes. I think uh, one of my favorite things I've done, like um, I moved here, I'm in Philadelphia now, but I moved here from Oregon. That's like way up in the Northwest of the United States. I'm like opposite end almost. And uh, I drove from those two locations and I just like, on the way, hit a free internet friend I made to like find places to crash and stuff like that. I'm just like, man, the power of the internet is amazing to Yeah. To That's it, because yeah, you were in um, Portland at the time that we, we met. Um, you're obviously now been in Philly for a couple of years now, is it? Yeah, about, yeah. about two years, I think. It's cool, but, but tell me how you got started out. That's what I really want to know. Like, How did you get into music? How did you start your MC journey, I guess? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been learning how to rap for a long time, I think. And then I, even longer than that, I'd say I was also trying to find who I was in mm. the lyrics and art and, you know, life, of course. Um, but I think when things first really start clicking, actually, was um, my first project, uh, this, an EP called Staring at the Ceiling. Yeah. And that was honestly like I wrote that coming off kind of a low point in my life and I feel like that's a common theme for a lot of the music I write that I'm really proud of um <laughs> but that was the first time like I was just getting out of a really serious like end of a romantic relationship and I had been like really stuck in that for a while but then I had to like, kind of reflect on things and you know literally stare at the ceiling and just see who i was at the time and that was the first time i wrote a song where just words f- spewed out and like flowed for me like it was it, it made sense to me everything was clicking everything felt natural and i made something you know mm-hmm. something beautiful out of something that made me feel bad and yeah. i would say that's when i got started I guess the, the long answer to that is I think <laughs> that song is when I got started because things started to, I knew who I was. I was just this naive, young, innocent, heartbroken kid just trying to make something good, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and that, that really resonates, I would say. Yeah. Like, I'm sure you relate to this, but music has always been more of a, an emotional outlet and catharsis for me. I think that's when it started to click. I was like, oh, this is what this is for me. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think that's that's it exactly. Because if I think about how I actually came to your music, we obviously have a common link in uh, Bob Forty Two J H, the guy who runs the channel. And um, at the time that I was working on Native Son, um, I basically sent a demo over to to them, to to Bob and to Thomas Prime. I was like, I could really use some MCs on a couple of tracks. And at that point, I hadn't really other than one uh, collab with MC. I hadn't really done much, it was mostly instrumental. Wow. And it was so important to me to have the right kind of voice, that's the thing. Um, I'm a, like a, a golden era kind of um, cat, so I, I love, you know, listening to a lot of the East Coast rappers especially, so Tribe Called Quest and um, uh, De La Soul and, uh, you know, that kind of 
that era basically um and i love mcs with stories and um who had the emotional content basically and of the list of mcs that bob gave me i came to your um staring at proceeding project exactly that um so that was the first thing that i listened to and man i, I listened to staring at the ceiling twice over before i even listened to the rest of the ep and i, I the first time was like the beat is is dope in any sense but as i was actually listening to the lyrics i played it back again uh and exactly as you're talking about with your romantic relationships and i could i could feel basically like the personal growth in the story that you're telling and i was like okay this could be it by the time I got to the end, by the time I got to try, I was basically like, Bob, <laughs> get me in the home. <laughs> I need this guy's email address. Like, I, I feel like this is the person who would get what I'm trying to do. And then just like send the email and pray basically that you you dug it, like you like the sound. Um, so yeah, that was that was my introduction to music. And that's still like, even now, because that was like 2010, wasn't it? Staring at the ceiling? Like, yeah. So it's 12 years on, like I, I still listen to that. It's still on my on my phone. It's like one of the things I listen to, like when I just want to listen. Wow, to me. Yeah. It's you have a great way of stories and I can hear like that's the thing, like despite I could see that there's um things that had been great, there's obviously some traumas as well that you were dealing with, but despite that all, like I could sense like the kind of positive energy from the personal growth and the healing that was going through as you were writing that and that's that's really what I thought he's going to get this, um, what I'm trying to do on an emotional level, I think so. Thank goodness that energy came out. Like, I, it's still very surreal to me. I always can be curious to like how people came about finding myself and finding my music is honestly like that. Every, every music project I've made, I mean, I haven't made a ton, but every one I've done has always been more for me and hopefully people identify with it and can relate to it kind of thing, but it's always been a thing I did for myself and it's also like as you say like a lot of traumas I'm very vulnerable on the lot of like the music that I'm really proud of making and that also like kind of leads to another conundrum to me as well because I was like oh yeah I, I would love for some people to hear this but like not too many people because mm -hmm. it's really personal <laughs> you know that, that's always been kind of a weird balancing act so was that like an initial hurdle for you would you say like because you're clearly very polished as an MC before getting to the staring at the ceiling so was it that you were you'd done a few things but you largely kept them to yourself before saying like okay here's a project i can now unleash definitely. yeah definitely mm -hmm. like i've had projects or not projects. i've had songs before i you know rapped for my friends at the time for fun but it was all uh just like rapping about rapping or rapping or like <laughs> rap just kind of things and nothing like really personal yeah, but at the time, um, my influences too, like as you said, a lot of East Coast rappers who did storytelling. And you know, I loved Slick Rick. I loved, um, also loved Elzai. That's kind of like my number one. Oh, you know, cool! Yeah, a lot of like Detroit sound that was big on. So like Elzai, Slum Village, Guilty Sound. Yeah, um, you know Dilla, of course. So people like that really influenced me, and I kind of adopted my rhyme patterns even from like their style. But okay, that's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. For me, like as a as a beat maker, obviously it was Dilla. Like it was obviously JD before he was Dilla, but Slum Village, like Fantastic Volume Two, and the great thing about that collaboration, like that was another thing as well. Like I learned how um, you can have this great relationship as a producer with, you know, the right MC as well, which was another thing I was trying to find. Like Dilla and Alzai and T Free, like the way they kind of bounce off each other on the record, uh, the way that uh, Tip and Fife, and again, Dilly worked with them as well. And uh, even like P-Rock and see us move and stuff, you know, uh, when you have the right producer and the right MC together, um, Gangstar, of course, as well, it's naming all my favorites here, but that kind of symbiotic relationship um, where the right kind of stories, um, the right messages and both having a chance to kind of showcase like what they can do and that's i'm not by any stretch like trying to put um our collaborations on that kind of level or anything but i felt I like <laughs> <laughs> but i felt like you were perfect like mm -hmm. on i couldn't celebrate 10 years um with nature summer not talk about missing you and 
I feel like that was the standout performance of that record. And, and I felt like for both of us, I remember you sent me an email saying like, I feel like I want to write about something um, that I haven't had the, the chance to uh, of a write project to. Um, and the fact that you, you wrote about what you did for that and that it was my work and um, that really meant a lot that I was able to do that. But also you were able to just bring, uh, it's like track free, it's the first kind of turn, I guess, on the album in terms of like having like a, a more somber kind of tone to it. And it, it really like, it, it meant a lot. It was the first single as well for that album that um, Court Classic released. So um, that was like, yeah, the first time I'd had an MC on track and I was like, this was uh, the perfect partnership. And I'm so glad like we had the chance to cross over on that. Yeah, it really is, it feels like right place at the right time like once again like i have no idea when i first upload my music into like the internet i'm like i didn't even like promote it or anything i was like let's see what happens and like i have still have no idea like how i got so lucky and just it's so serendipitous that somehow you that country year and we got to make that song and like yeah. to this day like when i talk about my music if people ask me about it, like oh what's your favorite like that's probably like one of my favorite ones because i felt really good on that i felt really polished on it and then it also was meaningful to me because that mm. was something that I've wanted to talk about for a long time. This is like, you know, me pre-therapy. Like I, I'm actually in actual therapy now, but like mm. there's a lot of things I need to say. And like I had lost a childhood friend of mine. I never got to really process that until um, we got to write that song. And uh, I just got to, and like even me as a person now, I'm very soft-spoken and I'm very keep to myself. I'm very introverted. But that Same. was kind of my way to scream something I've always wanted to let out into the universe. I'm just like, hopefully, wherever my friend is, like, he can hear it too. But if not, at least, like, other people can hear it and be like, I identify that. Or oh, what a story, like, I've been there before, or even like his relatives and things like that, you know? So, yeah, I'm happy that that's, I can that's that. awesome, man. That's so awesome. Uh, I had so many people at that time as well who were. Uh, like asking me for lyrics and stuff and like wanted to know more about the story. And I didn't really feel like I was privy to like talk about it at that time on telephone and stuff. So I never did that. But when we um, worked together again, like uh, 2020 on, on the next project on, I remember I actually did a lyric video for that on YouTube just so that people could, uh, could see that. But um, yeah, I, as I say, it, I could sense um, that you were someone who was going to have the take what I'd done basically, because at that point I'd only done instrumentals for the most part. And it's the same for me, like it's, it's my emotional expression, like I'll have stories that I'll just tell with the music, like you'll catch a feeling um, and hopefully that will resonate with you some, some way. But I feel like having the right words can elevate something quite massively and that's exactly what happened with this project and the fact that it could hopefully like give you a little bit of respite to you in being able to put that out that that's um that's something that i will never forget that's an experience i will never forget basically and so i asked like i had to like even though it was a gap of like seven years or whatever before we partnered again i was like i have to work with uh sean like, on arm again um and, and do something I'm so yeah. glad that's well received. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you um how did you meet Bob? Did you know him very well? Like obviously he put me on to to you, but was it a case of he just listened and Yeah. Do you know him personally? I've always been curious about that. Like have y'all have y'all met before? So when when I like kind of started out, he was doing his YouTube thing in about 2009. At the same time, I had a similar channel, but it was nowhere near as, as big as his. But we were running in similar circles and he was always super personable. Um, so we got on very well. He's also based in the UK, of course. He's in London. So we chatted a bit just out over the internet. We didn't actually meet in person until 2011, like when I actually went to go and sign on Cult Classic for Native Son. Uh, so that was the first time I met him and Thomas Prime as, as well. Um, yeah, prior to me like signing a contract for that. Um, I, I think I'm one of the only people maybe that's seen his actual face and knows what he looks like because he doesn't show himself. Um, but yeah, so that was that was kind of 
beginnings of that relationship basically um we still keep in touch but it's it's it makes himself very accessible to people so it's like very easily done um but yeah i was just curious as to whether you had known him personally yourself or exchanged emails with him or uh, kind of uh, your story confirms what he is to me because he's just a mysterious entity like i have no idea who he is we've never spoken that's funny too because like he put my music on his youtube channel he, he didn't even like i don't think he asked me or anything oh wow him. okay so I and i was like cool and then all of a sudden i started getting like emails and, like, <laughs> and, props and stuff and uh, i've never met the guy i don't even know what he sounds like or anything yeah That's so funny i i yeah, just so assumed <laughs> great guy never met him <laughs> <laughs> it just it gave me this list of mcs and i assumed like it was a personal relationship but maybe that's just being a good um, label manager and you know got to act for par right but and so yeah that's funny because i was like oh yeah how can i get in contact with anom and he passed me your email address so somehow he got that yeah. <laughs> but the van yeah, guard he like <laughs> Bank of the God, so yeah, he did. Um, so we could actually, yeah, have the collaboration that we have done. That's still the strangest thing to me because, once again, like I don't, I never promoted anything, and somehow it ended up in his speakers. And that's also a very surreal thing about music for it's, me as well because yeah. in this area, yeah, for sure, I've played in like different countries I've never even been to, you know. And, that's crazy, isn't it? Um, I say well, Nature Sun was one of if not the most popular projects that I've, i'd ever done and i had like cult classics reach obviously uh, to to thank for a lot of that and it has in, in, endured pretty well but i'm always staggered by like i can go into um bandcamp or spotify and see the data or youtube and all the different countries that people come from um who've listened or, or watched videos and it's still mad to me that um, I'm essentially just a bedroom producer. I always have been. I'm just a, a guy who's expressing himself similar to you. Whatever kind of happens, happens. I, I made the music I kind of want to hear. Everything else has been a bonus, right? And it's it's crazy that, <laughs> yeah, a, a kid like sitting across in the Philippines can be listening to my music or um, a big listener base in like Germany, uh, Australia. Yeah, it's it's really really surreal, but I yeah. I'm thankful to be in this like internet age where that has been a possibility, and I've been able to reach people. That again, the thing with making instrumental music is that it doesn't need to be translatable, right? But um, yeah, I, I'm just I'm feeling like I guess blessed is the word to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. That's what I loved about that project too. It's just like sounds and words that everyone can identify with you know and i think that's a beautiful moment of just coming together and that's what i was like i said too like i'm just i mean i'm everyone's nervous about their art but especially like when i recorded that and i was like this is cool i like this is i need to do this also i hope this wasn't a bummer like <laughs> i hope that i didn't like totally buzzkill this whole project so like for you to say like oh it's it was nice it was a good turn i changed your face so to speak you know that actually reminds me of um, someone I dated. It was like, do you ever like make fun music? I was like, no, it's all mofos. <laughs> so, I'm happy people can appreciate that around the world, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And again, like um, people can resonate with grief or everyone can resonate with grief, right? It's going to come right. some time for some people, obviously far earlier than, than others. That, um, yeah. I'm sure you can identify this too, but like I feel I'm making this for me, but if someone else, if even one person happens to identify or ever feel something from this, then I did a good job. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and then you kind of quiet for a little while until uh, Chamomile came out. Uh, again, like a very introspective and deeply personal project. And was it that you were at that time similar, like, just doing things for yourself until you're ready to put out another project or were you just spending that amount of time on the right tracks to, for this project or how, how did that come about? Well, um, after, you know, the rush you get after dropping your first project and it being well received, you know, I was just kind of riding off that high for a while. And like, uh, it was, 
to get like personal again too like i've always had like low self-esteem and i've dealt with depression and it's been like an ongoing battle but like i think that project and like having people reach out to me about it really helped lift me up and just show that i'm capable of creating and i'm like i, I can make things i do have talents I, i'm not just aimless you know yeah and so i was like that for a while and then uh i guess it was i would jumped on a few collaborations with other people stuff like that but nothing for myself because that's why i give props to people who make music even like now like decades later just because <laughs> music, music making music is hard man um but i guess i needed new traumas so like i kind of went through a lot in between um those two projects uh like there was moments where i actually drank i had a drinking problem and then uh I was homeless actually for a little bit too and that's something like I had to like fight out of and get back on my feet with and then I had uh, lost another person that I was really important to me as well and uh, a lot of that just had me at I wouldn't say rock bottom but you know it was a low point for sure so I had to fight back from that and then I wanted to recreate something that uh, Staring at the Ceiling gave me which was emotional outlet, catharsis, things I needed to like say and express and hopefully I feel better afterward <laughs> and hopefully um i wanted to do some good out of it too and hopefully other people can relate to it as well and that was also like a great moment that was like the last thing i did before leaving this uh city that i called home for like the last 15 16 years i just wanted to like mm-hmm. make one more music project and i wanted to like make open donations and whatever minute money i got i would just yeah. give it a chair kind of thing so i was the, the literal closing of a, a chapter for you in, in many senses then. Um, I did see, of course, at the time I, I remember it coming out and um, I remember that you were giving, um, or donating anything that came from that project to, uh, it was something supporting uh, youth, right, uh, at home. Uh, was that um, like a charity or project that's been close to you personally or? Not at all, really. I was just through, through research and stuff like that. To be honest, I had no idea like because i got nervous all of a sudden like i have this money it's like and like <laughs> it's funny how like corruptible people are because i was like i have thousands of dollars like maybe i should just treat myself to lunch i was like no i gotta get rid of this money now it's not for me <laughs> so i had to like find which charity to get to go to then it turns out like yeah make sure you donate to a right charity because some people pocket it themselves and things like that so i was like oh man i can't get yeah. to this experiment or anything so i decided to stick locally and like mm ask artists around my city and stuff like that They're like oh check this place out and I, I liked it there's a few other ones as well but i like that one the most because it dealt with um it mentored homeless youth and, like gave them an outlet for art and also like taught them job skills and i was like that's kind of amazing i just got done being like homeless and i would like to support kids not being homeless kind of thing so yeah oh man it's I'm I'm glad you're in a, a a much better place now, and it's cool for one thing. Like I, to talk about this, um, we're obviously talking in person now, but through your art as well. Uh, again, like men especially, right? Despite all the talk about mental health, still um, I think about like my closest friendships, and it's usually. The women who I'm talking most openly with about emotions and uh, feelings of what I'm going through more so than it is with my friends who are men. And again, there's, despite there being so much um, online now about like, you know, looking out for each other and checking in on people and stuff, I, I feel like it's still something that has a little bit of a stigma still with the idea of masculinity and what that means and not being able to talk, which is ludicrous when you think about it because it always certainly helps me being able to talk freely about things and not to have things going around and around in your head right um and you can sure like through art you're able to express a lot of that but we are at the end of the day like as humans we're sociable animals right we're obviously introverts but still you need to have somebody right that you can you can talk to and um so it's 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 awesome um, to see that, yeah, you're, I guess, comfortable to do that as well. Yeah, I think um, music has really helped me out in that regard too. Just like letting go of baggage or even just having 
it compartmentalized too. That's just the funny thing too. Like therapy, even as a kind of a newish thing for me, I started going maybe six months ago, I finally bit the bullet. I was like, you know, I can say like, I love music. I love what music done for me, but I should maybe process this mm. in other ways as well. And that's what's convenient too. They're like, oh, so like, I guess we're gonna talk about trauma. So luckily I have it all like contained in one beautifully refined music package. Here are my traumas, you know, and I got to this fabric there for reference. Yeah, it's a project with a lot of depth, chamomile. Um, and again, like I'm 100 percent sure that resonated with people the same way it did with me. But um, yeah, I I did like a cognitive behavioral therapy like uh, about three years ago now. Um, and I just um, my mom's a counselor. Like she retrained as a counselor. She worked in education for so many years, um, and. Um, she basically said to me years ago, and I kind of remember this, like everybody, everybody should have therapy. And I honestly believe that she's right. Like there is so much to, to unpack. Everyone is dealing with something. Often like as well, like you inherit your parents, either traumas or things as, as well. Um, and yeah, the, the process of finding your, yourself, I feel like um, it's something that takes a, a long, long time. Certainly, like into my twenties, like similar to you, like I had. Um, it's, it's weird. Like I'd have peaks and troughs with like self confidence and things like that, right? Uh, and I, I, I know the reasons for like why why those are. That's from a number of things, like um, how you're brought up, like school systems and things like that, and uh, state schools and being told that you're something, and then like it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy and relationships as well and navigating those and learning through through that um that's romantic relationships as well as like um your, your personal ones um and i would say like it was until like my 30s i think have been the best time of my life because i've just been able to do a lot more work on myself and um i can hear in your music that you're kind of always reaching to be like a, a, a better ver version of yourself and I feel like with me, that's what I try to do with Breezewax. Like the music I was creating, like, it's so chill um, because I wanted to be that chill person. Um, mm -hmm. I tried to create beauty to like make things better for other people. Um, and that was the kind of person I wanted to be. So I'm always trying to reach for that kind of level of perfection, which we would obviously never have as a human being uh, with all like the multiple like imperfections and, and flaws. but. That's a stab at it, and it's like if I can create something that's gonna have a positive impact on somebody else, or brighten their day, or help them through something, then that's um, that's good enough for me. That's that's really cool. So, um, yeah, it's cool to know that you've been like a soundtrack to a lot of people's day. You know, like it's interesting to think about too. What stories? That's just the beautiful thing about your music and having instrumental music in general is because it's. I wouldn't say like an open canvas, but you know, it's like a template for people. And it's like, oh, what kind of mm -hmm. stories are coming out of this? And that's such a beautiful thought, you know? That's why I was appreciated by your music. Like, mine's very concrete, like, this song's about this. <laughs> it's like, my lyrics are very literal, too, you know? But I, I loved how amorphous your music can be, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's very true, which is also great, though. Um, so when it came to um, working on, again, Help for Healing, that was an. It's in the name, isn't it, really? Like, that was a project for me. It was like, it was a very therapeutic process of trying to create something beautiful. And it came out at a time where obviously we were <laughs> under lockdown and uh, going for uh, across the world, like a really horrible period. So it kind of was coincidental that it was released in that, like, the beginning of that point. Um, but again, it's like, there's a, the beat that we worked on, I remember, I'd actually had kind of knocking around for a few years. I just hadn't really developed it enough. And I came back to it and I was immediately thinking like, this is a nom. Like, <laughs> uh, hope, he, uh, hope he likes it. Send it his way, see what happens. If it, if you weren't going to be on that, by the way, that track wasn't going to be on the album. I was just going to leave it. <laughs> it's one of those. Um, so I was so glad when you said like, actually, yeah, I'm in a point where I feel like I'm ready to do something again as well. So, and obviously at that point, I think you kind of very recently moved to, to Philly. So that must have been, um, yeah, a, a cool jumping off point for you, like um, new city, like uh, let's work on some new project as well. Yeah. 
that was also like, I don't know, that was unofficially my staring at the ceiling part two. In a way. Oh, that was like, cool. So yeah, I was like, "Who am I in life right now?" I'm like, "Oh no, I'm still figuring it out." And that's when I realized I was like, "I guess we're all just figuring it out." But <laughs> I was definitely like a big transitional period because I just like left my hometown and uh, now I'm in this new place. Yeah, I think that was like a big uh, focus on that song was just to talk about um, getting back up with my family. You know, mm-hmm. that's the thing too. Like I, before I moved out here, I hadn't seen my family like five years or so like we've just been having been connected and i turned 30 and i was like what i what have i not done in life yet and i was like i haven't been close to my family that's kind of like one of the reasons that brought me out here as well mm-hmm. and then lockdown happened and i got really close to my family so i was like it's more than that but yeah that's cool that's that's a beautiful thing man um i kind of feel like all of our lives will be uh figuring things out and navigating things um Especially when it comes to parents, you know, when you get to that point as like a preteen, when you kind of realize that your parents are fallible as well and like <laughs> not always yeah. right, and that they are also just dealing with their shit as well. Um, and yeah, I feel like you can only kind of move off the shoulders of what's gone before and try and do better in your generation, right? But there will always be things, right, that you're just trying to figure out and make peace with. and. That track sounded like you were a, a man who was beginning to like find some some peace and some contentment with things, and that that was really great to to hear as well on that track. So again, like it, it feels like a warm hug to me. I remember, like I, I really feel like that. <laughs> awesome. I mean, like that's that makes me happy to hear. Cause like obviously you've heard. It's been a long time since you've like first heard my music. And it seems mm-hmm. like you've been listening to it and that makes that warms my heart but i'm happy like that's kind of like an epilogue i guess that song is like oh this is my check-in and i'm happy that you got that vibe like oh i'm figuring things out i'm content things like that so it's i don't know like i like we said like i deal with a lot of traumas in my music so it's nice to nice things wrapped up with a warm hug that's that makes me very happy yeah but as, as you say like um it's um turning it into something beautiful i think is is the thing like that kind of connects both of our styles of music i think and i think that's what's given is like um maybe the connection that we've we've had musically so yeah it's been a privilege man it really has honestly um, i'm so glad that we've been creating art at the same time um yeah that was just too perfect <laughs> <laughs> like now that i've talked to you and like i get your vibe and i was like now nah, i can see why we go along like, we <laughs> definitely like friends from far away <laughs> yeah who knows, maybe we will at some point meet in properly in, in the flesh in the future. Like life can be strange, right? Stranger things have happened, so. The world is also incredibly small that I found out as well. So. But also, who knows? Um, I mean, I'm in school right now to be a nurse and the ultimate goal is to travel with it. So who knows, I'll, maybe I'll take an assignment out of Manchester. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, thank you so much for coming and chatting to me, man. And. Um, yeah, I will always remember, I remember, and I'll always have a place in my heart for missing you. Like, it's been a great connection, so thank you. Thank you, it's been really good to hear what happened on the other side of the ocean, you know, like how, <laughs> this, how this happened. So it's, it's really cool. I appreciate oh. this. <laughs>